16 teams will be competing to have their spaceship immortalized in the upcoming game, Star Citizen. Last week, five teams qualified. This week, five teams will join them. Welcome to the next great starship. Hi everyone, I'm Sandy Gardner, and this is the second episode of the next great starship. This competition is about designing a starship for the upcoming space epic, Star Citizen. <laughs> Created by Chris Roberts. <laughs> and our other judges, Mark Skelton. Art director and style guru extraordinaire. Sean Tracy. Uh, Crytech cry engine evangelist and the mean judge, apparently. <laughs> Chris Olivier. Chief visual officer of Cloud Imperium Games. And Chris Smith. Elite vehicle modeler. Now remember, to enter the competition, teams had to design a gun. So we're going to do this again. We're going to see eight teams. You're going to vote on five. Five are going to go through, and three are going to go into the wild card race. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Set. Set. Set for judging. Let's yes. do this. All right, let's do this. Let's roll the first video. Hello. I'm Alexander Lord Kipanidze, and I live in Georgia. I do modeling. I do texturing. I take pretty pictures and try to make them my reality. In a good time of day. My name is Andrei, obviously enough. I am also from Russia, from Nazir, to be precise, a small city not far from Moscow. I'm a technical artist and my specialization both generally with this particular team is to animate and integrate. I get a model and I make it brief. Hello, my name is Alexey Kapov. I'm from Irkutsk. I deal primarily in concept art and I normally specialize in sci-fi and game production. I will be doing concept work and visualization. I like that design a lot. This is one of my favorite from the competition. It's a great silhouette. I love the gas canisters that are just kind of stuck in the side. I love how the, the front uh, kind of animates and turns and then when it stops, I like how it kind of opens up a little bit. That feels really cool to me. It feels almost like a swordfish. You know, it has that kind of long, like piercing nose on it. I think it's weighted really well and I think the textures and how they um, implement it are, are really nice. So, it's one of my favorites. Wow. Completely. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Agree with everything. Yeah. Sean? I mean, actually, uh, I agree completely as well. It does look like a render in the end, but I mean, it's a really good design. Dude, that's and that concept uh, and that's work, gonna, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, the concept that, artist work, the stuff that he was showing on screen there. Stuff. It's like amazing. Some of the best I've seen. I like it. It's, uh, it's definitely one of my favorites. It's got the right amount of detail. It has a sense of weight, it looks interesting, and I like it, the way it sort of closes in and opens up. You can see the execution on the concept, you can see the modeling, the detail in the modeling, the texturing, pretty much all phases with the possible exception of in-engine implementation. Um, yeah, that's some of the best uh, work we've seen. That works as good as anything that you know, we would probably outsource to be in the game. So. I mean, that's a great example of like doing really, really good concept and following it very, very closely. So. Yeah. All right, well, a lot of love for this team. Have we got any negatives? I mean, questionable on in-engine, so... Just not sure whether it is or not. And uh, if it is, that looks fantastic. Uh, but I'm not sure it is. If they did implement it in engine, it would be nice to have um, maybe the metals be more metal. Uh, I mean, it, it looks like there's like a powder coat on it right now, which is cool. I dig that, but maybe have some spots that um, have variation in, in spec and gloss. A bit of that would have been nice. Yeah. My only comment would be when it, the front barrel animates, it kind of looks like a, a cake mixer a yeah. little bit. <laughs> I mean, I love the textures of modeling too. It's a great gun. Let's roll the next one. Greetings. My name is Benjamin Turner. I live in Mesa, Arizona. So being the only member on Team Belafonte, uh, all of the roles that are needed for the competition uh, kind of fell on my lap. 
So this is my entry for the competition in Engine. Let's fire up the particle system and animation so you can see it in motion. It's a little bit less uh, outstanding without any sound effects. I'm sure it'd be a lot cooler. With that. Pew, 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 pew. He gets in point. engine. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, definitely one of my favorite in the competition. It's a, it's a unique design. Um, it, yeah, it looks very utilitarian, but I guess it would be anyways. And the in-engine implementation looks fantastic. I love the counter rotation of the barrels and the uh, variation of material across it. It's, it's really well done. Chris, your opinion? I liked it. It was uh, overall nice design. It, it looked pretty powerful, beastly. I think it could have had a little bit more alien fluid tech to it. So Chris, what did you think? Overall design of the gun was good. Uh, I think I agree with Chris. It, it could have used a little bit more alien manufacturing technology in there. It, it sort of looked only man-made with human technology. And uh, it looked a little bit similar to uh, uh, our Gatling gun that we already have. But I thought the texturing was pretty decent. The modeling was good. Uh, and the imp implement it was, was good. It could use a little bit more work though. Mark, give us your opinion. The top cowling part was, it looked like there's some modeling problems with the it back on the top. Part. It probably should be broke up a little more as far as that top cowling specifically. But I love that like circular design in the back. It's almost like a Tommy gun, you know, except it's around the back, which is cool. Really big, beefy gun. I like that. It feels like it's heavy and could like really it, throw some lead. I would yeah. definitely say that's pretty impressive that you had one person, you know, do that concept and model it, yeah. animate it, uh, put it in engine, do the particle effects. Um, I did like something about the sort of stubby feel of the gun because yeah. a lot of the guns you've had have all been sort of very long. Mm -hmm. um, I like the animation. I, I, I thought it was uh, really nice. It was um, pretty impressive. Very thoughts on that one. Let's roll to the next one. My name's Aaron Miles. I'm a 3D journalist and I'm based in Surrey near London. I studied computer games design at university, uh, although I didn't go into the games industry. Currently I'm you know, doing offline animation. I'm working on this project alone, so I'm covering the whole gamut. All right, who's going to say who's it? Who's going to say it? Who's going to say it? <laughs> well, it looks like an it. air blower. <laughs> right, exactly. That's well, the most leaf badass hair leaf dryer. blower I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. Agreed. The design, like, it's so much that that your brain can't snap away from that. Agreed. It's just, that's what it is. Although, although it to be like fair, that. I actually, having someone that grew up in England, I don't think you actually have leaf blowers in England. I've actually never seen them. <laughs> I only ever saw a leaf blower when I That's first true. came to America. I think it's a complete American I, thing. Because it's like, we'll blow it somewhere else and someone else will take it. <laughs> 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 I have to say, I, mean, I quite liked it, like it and I thought it was kind of nice when he put it on the Hornet so you could actually see yeah. it mounted yeah. on the ship. It was sort of interesting because it wasn't the same as all the other ones where it sort of feels like everyone kind of does some variation of a Gatling gun. So I was actually quite impressed with it and I did think leaf blower, but I will say he's English. We don't have leaf blowers in England. <laughs> we give him a so, pass on yeah. the leaf blower. I thought it was actually executed fairly decently. The yeah. modeling looked good and uh, clean and the texturing. I mean, you know, it wasn't that roughed up look. It was very basic. Design wise, it's not my favorite. Yeah, I would have liked to see a little more in engine, not just a screenshot on the ship. I mean, that did save it uh, for me because uh, I mean, it does look like a, a, it's a strange mix of materials on it. They don't look like they belong together. Chris, you want to weigh in? When I first saw it, I, I didn't like it at all. And then it, this was one of the ones that sort of grew on me a little bit. Um, just the, the unique design. Um, and I, I, like Chris said, I, I thought it was sort of well modeled and put together. Um, I agree that the, the color and the textures and the color palette um, seemed off putting for some reason. Um, but I think it's a, a, a really, the way it's mounted on the ship, it's kind of a, a unique sort of take on it, so. Okay, so if a design looks very similar to leaf blower or hair dryer, is this negatively affecting the design? I think it does hurt the design a little bit because once you see it, you can't unsee it. So 
every time you look at it, that's what it is. Just like and that shirt. It sticks out. <laughs> yeah, like my shirt. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, there, it's nice sometimes to take shapes from real life and integrate them and incorporate them into something because it's something that we can sort of relate to and it's uh, it usually small objects in the real world kind of translate in a really cool way to to different things but if it if it's too literal then it will take you out of the sort of the you know the, the I mean, fiction I, of it so. i think this gun could be helped with uh, maybe perhaps like different materials different color and stuff like that to integrate it into a ship uh, i mean you can get away with a certain shape like chris chris olivia says uh, but i think everything like the color and everything and the decals on it it kind of made it more close it, it just kind of red like hair dryer or something like that but yeah there's pros and cons i i just thought it was interesting because it tried to do something different which yeah, was absolutely which you know is nice because normally when you think weapon everyone sort of just goes right. one way yeah he definitely gets props for uniqueness because it it's definitely one of the more unique weapons that we've seen so props for the uniqueness on this we'll see if it gets into the final five Let's look at the next one. Hello, my name is Niklas. I'm 23 years old. I live in Hamburg and I work as a 3D artist in the game industry. Hi, my name is Malte Riesenberger. I'm 28 years old and I came from Berlin to Hamburg because of my 3D job and I work in the games industry for about six years. That's absolutely phenomenal, that, that <laughs> particular design. I think the presentation and engine is, is fantastic. I mean, the material variation along it, the way they shot it, I mean, they're, they're tiny critiques like, okay, you know, don't have such a deep depth of field, you're gonna get halos on your objects and things like this, and they have a little bit of that, but I mean, uh, all in all, I think this is absolutely one of the best ones. I like the gun in the front. I like the barrels in the front. I like the detail that they did. I like the um, yeah, gurneys. But the, like, the back doesn't the fit back the front. The back just fell apart completely it sort for of me. felt like they've got their crocodile skin they, going in the back. It's almost, the yeah, the big like hexes. It's almost yeah. like they ran out of time and like, screw it, we'll just put a big texture on there and go forward. It's like they needed to break the back up more than it was because the front part, you could tell they spent great. a yeah, lot of time good. on, you know, and I like the way that the integration is with the design in the front barrels, the way that they fit together look really nice. And yeah. there's a lot of like nice detail there, but. I agree with Mark, whereas I sort of felt like the front was really nice, I liked it. Yeah. And then at the back, it just sort of didn't have the same level of detail or interest mm -hmm. for me. I yeah. sort of didn't necessarily like the pattern. It didn't feel like it fit right. the front gun. It sort of felt like you two took different styles. two different yeah. guns yeah. and, yeah. and glued them mean. together. The way they so, broke it up was not. Yeah, so I mean, in the engine, it was great implementation. I mean, like there's a whole bunch of stuff there that's yeah. you know really impressive. But uh, design-wise, for me, yeah, I sort of felt like someone had sliced and diced, and right. there was a cool gun mm -hmm. on the front, and there was something on the back that didn't fit with it, and also didn't seem to have as much time and attention spent to it, which. Yeah. Front versus back for you two. Chris Owe, what did you think? Well, yeah, I think that um, it is very different and I found myself just, oh, wow, the front is cool and then just this big blobby thing in the back. And um, I think if they took some of the, the elements and the shapes from the back um, and sort of like um, used them in the front and vice versa, you know, maybe opened it up a bit and had some of the, the straight structure towards the back to sort of cohesify everything. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe their successful. idea was the back's the Jean, the front's the right. human. Right, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, that's what I you know, they kind of went alien, very alien in the back and then very uh, human made in the front. Uh, yeah, and I agree they should probably mix it up a little bit more. I mean, I really, the front barrel design is one of my favorite of, of all the guns. I mean, the material looks great, that, that sort of glossy white paint job. Uh, the detail is great and the logos. Uh, but yeah, the back kind of falls apart. For me, it, because it was so big, those hexes were so big and they, and they just kind of slapped it on there. It made the back part feel like a different scale than like the front part. You know what I mean? And that blew it for me too. But an overall feeling? 
It's a good gun. Yeah. It just needs some work in the back. Uh, their in-engine work is is one of the best too. So yeah, you know, we I definitely think it's good. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. And it's really I mean, good work. It's impressive that Brendan Fraser's doing this stuff now. Yeah, <laughs> it is. He's multi-talented. Yeah. Guys, a lot of likes from the judges, so we'll see how this goes. Let's look at the next one. My name is Patrick, and I currently work as a lead artist in the games industry. Uh, on this project, I'm responsible for modeling and texturing. Next up, we have Peter, who also works in the games industry as a concept artist, and on this project, he is responsible for all the concept art and the blueprints that we need. And last but not least, we have Gustav, who is uh, currently working in the gaming industry as a VFX artist. He's responsible for all the visual effects and the uh, CryEngine integration on this project. So right now, uh, two of us work and live in Malmö, Sweden, and uh, one of us lives in Vancouver, Canada. Roberts, come on, tell us what your uh, thoughts are. are. They obviously have got taught and they're in the game business, but I, I, I sort of feel like the gun's like not doing much. It's pretty simple. There's not, the particle effects for me had like more things going on than the gun. I mean, the gun's sort of sitting there. It's not really got that much detail into it, and it's not really animating that much. So I could see in it that I sort of said, well, you know, there's, there could be something cool here, but I just sort of feel like it's like the initial sketch and it hasn't really gone beyond that. And uh, you know, I wanted, I don't know what it is, recoil something. I mean, if the, you're going to be animating, you're going to be showing particle effects, you should be showing how that gun's firing, moving. So full disclosure, I actually worked with Gustav on Crisis 2 and his job is actually a VFX artist. Yeah, so dude, that that's why all the particles right and everything look phenomenal because yeah, this guy's good. amazing well, I, at I, that. I said they were good. I just think probably on the concept side, they went for something too simple too for the, at least the judge's taste here. The gun design itself, I think, was lacking. The three little uh, glowy bits around the side. We know how much you like glowy bits without reason and rhyme. <laughs> the glowy there. bits. I mean, the, 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 thing that makes, bits. the thing that makes it look so simplistic is because it's all just one color, yeah. one hue. It's all yeah, very too. dark. I mean, totally. I mean, they put it in this general scene, which kind of obscured a lot of it with the tree uh, shadows hitting it. There's no texture breakup. I mean, you can get a lot that's of true. detail out of a gun that's not necessarily modeled really detailed, but you can get a lot of breakup and extra detail through just uh, breaking up hues and colors. Uh, and this was just all sort of flat, one thing. Yeah, I really wasn't a big fan of the glow either. Just, uh, just putting a glow on something doesn't really make it alien. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> oh, it's not glowing, it's just green. <laughs> oh, it glow. <laughs> Let's see who's next. Right now we are uh, based out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and we really look forward to showing you what we've got. Chris Smith, what did you think? The the design overall uh, seemed seemed very simplistic. Again, uh, not a lot of um, level changes. It's all sort of very one one level, you know, and just a couple panel lines cut in. It's not the most interesting looking gun silhouette wise. I thought the modeling was fine, and, and the texturing was actually okay too. Mm. I don't care for the orange that much though. So. <laughs> In engine, right? Yeah, in engine, in our uh, Forest SDK level. And for anybody showing stuff in the engine, you could get rid of that display info stuff. Just, you know, you don't need all the debug text, just saying. Chris Olivia? Um, yeah, decently executed, but it, you know, I mean, like a lot of the other things, it's just sort of like you got this very long, sort of straight, thin, rotating barrel. And some of the shapes on it were interesting that I noticed in the, the flat-shaded model, but 
it sort of got lost. Yeah, the, um, the Max, where they were showing it in Max mm -hmm. animated, looked a lot more interesting yeah. than yeah, what they did. brought in yeah. the engine. I think that was yeah. because you could see the different parts, yeah. and yeah. you could actually see the recoil. Uh, where it once gets engine, it was I think it was just all straight R and I think it lost a lot of thickness, uh, especially yeah. along the barrel. I mean, it, um, it looked really thin there. Yeah. It has a real stealth bomber flair t about it. I think it's the angles that they picked. You know, like on stealth bombers, they have the the radar bouncing angles and the way that it's like super flat. You know, and I think that if you were to take this weapon and put it like say on some stealth bomber looking plane that it would look correct but again if you put this on like a hornet it's going to look weird it's not going to look quite right it's not to say it's a bad design because it's not a bad design i just don't think it's a design that belongs in our universe that's all but for me it didn't especially the final product in engine didn't didn't capture me so it, really it looked more either. promising earlier i mean there's definitely some talent and skill there but um I didn't get sort of an emotional connection to the gun the way that I would hope. Well, bearing opinions on that one too. Let's roll to the next one. Hi, I am a conceptual designer of our team. Hello, I am a 3D modeler of our team. Hi there, I am a texture designer for this project. As you guess, my team is consists of only one member, and this is me. My name is Dmitry Smyslov. I am 32 years old. I know you won't believe, but it's true. I live in St. Petersburg. My design idea is to make something opposite to the usual weapon. Again, interesting design for sure, very unique. Uh, I thought the, uh, the execution was actually well done. The, the texturing, if you go up close, looked pretty good. The weathering looked nice. Some of the colors I'm not too crazy about personally. And the design, although unique, I don't know, it looks like, like finger bones to me in yeah, the front. That's what I was like it's thought. sort of got a little so bit of a tribal bones. feel to it. Um, it feels but like a fantasy gun it's not. or like dungeon yeah, dragon. Warhammer type. 40k. Or like Warhammer, a Warhammer 40k. Yeah, it yeah, feels yeah, like it belongs in that, that universe. For sure. <clears throat> Anything that it looks like I can just like snap off, you know, it, and those bo little bones around it just sort of bug me a lot. I think he was trying to distract away from the bones with a lens flare halfway through the video and, you know. I didn't think that was necessary. So. Sean, in engine? Yeah, that was all in engine. Um, actually, pretty well presented uh, in engine as well. You got real close in. And the open design of the gun, though it was what it was going for, I'm not sure really worked all together. And then you have like two different pieces. You've got this front wide open piece and then a weird shape in the back. Um, I, I think the, just the bones really would have worked better. Well, the bones, whatever they were. all the way through. Is if they didn't have a bone color to them, you yeah, know, right, maybe if it was yeah. like a, a you know, Definitely sort of reinforced a, a matte black. A yeah, matte black, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, and it was sort of like just reinforced on the, either on the top, so you had a thicker part, sure. and it seemed like it was more welded, you know, I think it would have been more interesting. So. I was torn on this one when I saw it because I definitely think it's props for trying to do something different, to not be the standard gun, and it kind of was going for sort of an alien feel, although it's more like Geiger alien than it is sort of what the genre would be. When you go for that, I sort of want to understand and feel how that gun works, and so I didn't really understand the, There's no how it was. Were there? Yeah, well, how it was going to fire. Like, what it, you know, is it is it a rail gun that's accelerating something through that open track? What is it? Just something that to, to help me understand why it's built that way. Those are the downsides, but I di I did like the attempt to do something new, and I also thought the in-engine implementation was one of the better ones we yeah. had in terms of getting up close, seeing the texturing. It's not offline rendering, that's doing it sort that's of the real-time real -time real -time rendering yeah. in the system. So sure. that was pretty good. So I think there's definitely talent there. I'm not sure if that would be one of my picks for you know, a weapon that I'd want to see on a uh, ship and star system, but I, I think he's a talent. All three of him are very talented. <laughs> 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 but quick yes or no, props for doing something different. Because yeah, it's basically, totally. Oh yeah, props. Yeah, that's yeah. Interesting. This is a very different video from a lot of the others we've seen. Yeah, yeah. definitely. We'll Absolutely. see if that's enough to get through to the final five. Okay, guys, we've only got one video left. 
So let's roll it. I'm Heath Alex, also known as EP. I'm with Team Try Try. I'm from Boise, Idaho, and it's my job to come up with the initial designs that are going to make up our concepts overall. Greetings, citizens. My name is Weiss. I come from Dubrovnik, Croatia, and I am Team Try Try's 3D model. Hi, everyone. My name is Griffin. I'm from Olathe, Kansas and I am the CryEngine Specialist and Animator for Team tri, -Tri. Olivia, as our Chief Visual Officer at Cloud Imperium Games, let's let you kick this one off. Um, I thought it was a nice design. I thought the concept was pretty, uh, pretty good. They could have done a little bit more with the, I think, the materials, um, but I think overall it was uh, pretty solid. Safe. Safe, yeah, somewhat safe, not taking a lot of chances, but kind of cool. You concur then? Yeah, it's solid and the textures are good. They have the talent to push themselves harder. And I think, honestly, if they would have just gone out of their safe zone a little bit and took some chances, I think this good gun could have been a, an amazing gun. I thought it was it had had nice detail. The animation was mm -hmm. good. Impressive that they put it on a Hornet and was flying around and shooting stuff. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, I do agree the materials could do some work, and I, the lighting could have done some work mm -hmm. in that scene. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were probably hurt by the lighting. So I think I think they're a really talented team. So. Uh, you know, using the internet to work across uh, geographic boundaries, Croatia mm -hmm. and a couple of places in America. Um, but yeah, I, I think they're, they're, they're interesting. I like the design because um, it definitely, you know, had the weapon feel, didn't feel exactly like everything else, but had, it sort of felt familiar, but also felt like it was slightly different to me. There was some of the details on the weapon at the end and at the front, the way they mm. handled sort of the muzzle area and the back sort of, it was kind of visually interesting to me. I thought it actually integrated well with the ship. Yeah, it uh, did. And it looked like one of the weapons, I mean, style or general style wise that we already have. So yeah, it was definitely very solid in that way. Uh, a little bit more love on the texture and color maybe, uh, but everything else was great. Yeah, so something really cool about it was when he was demonstrating the gun, there was this right uh, purple uh, background, and all of that was actually an engine. And he even did all the uh, sort of flash stuff uh, right in engine, so that's really, um, it takes some know-how to do that. Um, and that's pretty impressive. I think I know exactly what he's going for, which is having that alien shell of a weapon yeah. with, with a human interior stuck into it, basically, because it, it shows it off really nicely when it's up on the Hornet sideways, right? Because yeah. you've got this hole where you see the actual weapon firing through, but it really looks like it's some sort of alien cowling, uh, cowling uh, around a human weapon. So, yeah, I, I really like this one. Yeah, it does integrate well with the ship. You know, I'll give him that. Um, it was just like a, maybe a little bit of silhouette breakup would have been cool. It sounds like a team with talent that you guys could work with, basically. Oh, yeah. I think pretty much everyone that, that has stuff has talent, and some oh, yeah. of our critiques are based on we have a different view of how the things should look in the world than, say, a person, but we haven't had a chance to even work with them. So a lot of times in this you know, direction makes a big difference anyway. So I think we've got, you know, it's amazing the amount of talent. Last episode, this episode, yeah. Um, the next one, it's, uh, you know, it was hard getting down to 24, so it's going to be hard getting to 16. Yeah. Okay, judges, you know what time it is? It's voting time. Come so you there. know how it works. Some of your top five. I'm going to tally them up. The top five go through. Okay, send it to you. Sent? That was fast. What did it do? Speedy. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I like. All right, guys. Well, the results are in, and it seems to me that you're all on the same wavelength. All right. Because we've got four teams <laughs> who have five votes each. And those teams are Troika, Team Belafonte, Vision Cut, and Tri-Tri. 
And I'm sorry to say that Sakura Moon and To the Stars and Beyond got zero votes, which leaves us with Team AEM or Team Catapult. And this is a really close one, so I'm going to get you guys to judge this out live. And you can give us your thoughts on each team and why you chose the one that you chose. Mark. I chose Catapult because I just, I mean, the hairdryer one, I, again, I like it. It's just, I, I think the design is, is a little too weird for me. I like the, the clean of the Catapult design. Um, it's, it had some nice texture work, some, uh, some nice nicks and stuff in it. The orange is not my favorite, but you know, maybe I can talk him into changing it. Let's see, I went for AEM, which is uh, the yeah. hair dryer, leaf blower. Um, Always got to be but different No, 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 I just, I, I, yeah, yeah, I would rather go for something that felt like it tried to do something a bit unique and original, and I sort of felt it was cool, and it kind of looked yeah, when it was sitting on the Hornet, I would never have thought that thing would have actually fit on the front of the Hornet, but it actually looked better on the Hornet than I thought it was. And yeah, I just, I'd, I sort of felt like I wanted to give a nod uh, there. And, um, you know, AEM would be, uh, would be good for me. I mean, Catapult was good too, but AEM uh, got the vote for me. I guess. One each, Sean. Yeah, for me, it's Catapult all the way. Um, first of all, they're Canadian, Edmonton, Alberta, from my hometown. <laughs> so I got to give them a, a, just that little couple more points. My mother's there. Hi, Mom. <laughs> my mother. Um, it was animated so in the engine. It was animated. So it was up. in engine. I didn't see the other one really clearly in engine. Yeah, okay, there was a screenshot, but there was nothing moving around. So, yeah, catapult all the way for me. Yes. All right, Chris, you could be the vote decider at this point. Um, I th thought they were both very close. Um, I think AEM had a sort of a really interesting, bold take on it. Um, Catapult, you know, at first I, I was sort of underwhelmed just because it, it became sort of too muddy, but Mark sort of convinced me that, oh, well, if it was on a stealth fighter, then uh, it would fit a little bit better. Um, so I went with Catapult. Yes, rock on. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right, well, community, if you disagree with Mark, Sean, and Chris Olivier, then get in for the wild I card win. talk. I <laughs> win. Bam. Next week's a big one. You're going to vote for your final five and then the last three wildcard teams. So that we can move on, we'll have 16 teams that go in to create. The next great starship. And uh, that's going to be the fun part where we actually get to making the starship, spaceship, designing it, modeling it, texturing it, getting an engine. Really looking forward to everyone here working with the talented people that we already have in our competition. And give it up to the team. It's going. <laughs> give it up. Great. great job. Great. So yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. So tune in next Friday for the next Great Starship. Wave. <laughs> <laughs>